let's welcome uh, Nick Dunkerley, oh. uh, creative director for Hindenburg, to tell us all about the new feature. But uh, before we do that, Nick, can you just, for everybody who's playing at home, give us a review of what we have in 2.0 so far before the new feature yes and uh, before i do anything else i better just ask you if we're actually sharing my i'm sharing my screen right now you are and i should say one thing to everybody who is uh watching and joining uh with us if uh so nick is sharing his screen um there should be a little icon in the uh right side of your screen where you can put this in into full screen view, which is probably a good idea. It's also, AirMeet is a browser uh, service, so you also probably wanna put that browser window in full screen, just so you can see everything as large as, as you can. But yeah, we can see your screen, Nick. Good. Okie dokie. So just to, to recap where we were, um, not going all the way back, but well, even that maybe. Um, I haven't actually thought about doing that. But here we go. This is what we're coming from. That is just to tell everyone what we have been uh, doing of late. And if you haven't got the, um, the latest beta version yet, this is what you have at the moment. So this is what we know, and this is how things look at the moment. So there's been a huge amount of changes. Everything looks different. There are new features there. Uh, we have added a manuscript, and for all of you who have been lucky enough to actually uh, been able to get your hands on the beta, you've been trying it out. Everyone else, uh, anyone who wants to try the beta out now can just do that. What we have here in the beta is the manuscript. So basically what you can do is you can take a piece of audio, you can have it transcribed like so, and then from there, you'll get the, uh, the transcription, uh, which we then put into the manuscript. Um, a few things that have happened since last is we've added some additional languages to the, uh, to the transcription, which is great. We, I think we started out with three or four, and now we've at least doubled that. So you can even have it in Mandarin, if you like, which looks quite cool, by the way. You should try it out. Obviously, I have no idea what it says, but it looks cool. Okay. Um, a few other things that we've done to the manuscripts since last. Basically, we the features are more or less the same. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, housekeeping because we got a lot of feedback from you and uh, found a lot of bugs, obviously, as you do in a beta. But we have actually added a few new things. For instance, we actually made the search field work, so you can uh, search for a word in the in the search field, then it will be highlighted in the text. And you can just tap to the next version of that word as you, you know, just as you expect, really. So that works, and it works great. And then um, also, as we came out with it, we had the clipboard, but it needed a bit more work. So some of you have been nice enough to tell us that we've, we had a few flaws there, and you're absolutely right. And I think we've managed to get everything back to normal, so to speak. So it has a new look, but all the features that you knew from before are now there. The, the shortcuts for adding stuff to the clipboard uh, work as before. So you can just add a clip to the clipboard with a shortcut. If nobody knows you could do that, you can. You use uh, uh, option command one for clipboard one, two and three, and so on and so forth. Um, but for everyone else who was using it already, it works again. Uh, you're welcome, and you can track stuff back. And you can also do your search directly here in the clipboard. Two other things that we've um, managed to, to fix is just some minor things. It's now easier to see where you're actually adding your clip when you're moving stuff around. You can just uh, copy directly from a clip just with a shortcut. Uh, that would be Command C if you're on a Mac, or Control C, and just paste it anywhere. So you can do just do copy and paste directly from the clipboard. So really easy to use, and the same goes for the favorites. So I think Jonathan, did I basically cover what we already have? 
Yeah, we got transcription. Of course, the waveforms look different. We have a new way to color clips. Um, that's oh, a yeah. different thing. <laughs> yeah. Again, going back from the old one, uh, everything was in uh, one color, except when you highlighted something. And for the longest time, we wanted to add color. And it's really been tricky to figure out how do we do that. So we came up with this solution. So you highlight a clip, you add a color to it, any color you like, and that's it. But for us to be actually be to be able to do that, we had to make quite a few changes to the region itself. But at the same time, we wanted it to be the exact same. So in the olden days, if we looked at the clip like this, you add a gain by dragging up and down or making a fade like so. And that was really easy to understand. So we wanted the same thing here. You drag up and down to, for the gain. You've got the fade right there and the fade in and out. You can do your ducks as you did before and your sound bits. And if you have never seen anything I just did, you can always go to our website under support and find tutorials for all these things. But it's just to say, yes. nothing's changed. If you know how to use the program, uh, it will be the exact same features that you've used before. Uh, all the shortcuts are the exact same thing. All the features are the same. It just looks slightly different. But as I was saying, we, we had to make it look slightly different so we were able to add transcription to the region, add colors to it, and so on and so forth. Um, and to be honest, we quite like it. So great. That is for all the folks who are joining us here who saw our last presentation last month when we revealed 2.0. That's everything we have going now. But what is the new feature that we are looking at today? The new feature that we're looking at today is a video track. Uh -huh. Now, yes, and that sounds interesting. I, I might up already up front say just to meet any form of disappointment, we're not going into video editing. This is post-production audio sound. We are still an audio tool, and we think we're just going to keep doing that because that's what we're really good at. But there has been, for the longest time, a, um, a demand from video producers who are working in stuff like, I don't know, Premiere or Final Cut or... In this case, something like this, which is uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is a great tool, by the way, um, for having the the abilities that you have in Hindenburg to do your audio, um, but it, that that's really what you want to do. So we're going to get back to that in a second. Let's just start from scratch with what we can do with the video format. Right. Some people are okay. familiar from... 2.0, or I'm sorry, from 1.0 with with dragging a video in. Can you start there of, of you know, what? Yeah, let's, let's start with the basics. I think that's, yeah. that's probably a good idea. Let me just close down a few of these. Um, for the longest time, it's, it's been possible to, to strip the audio of a video clip. So let's see. If we find a video clip like this one, can drag that in and that will just give us the audio from that clip. That can be really, really useful if you uh, just want to add some audio from a video clip that you have to your <clears throat> radio show or your podcast. So that will just be the, uh, the import that works the same way as importing any sound. So you press the import or drag and drop and then you can just add that movie clip. Right. So the next thing that I can do, do another one. Let's just do one. Let's see the differences. I'm just going to take this trailer here. So we just get the sound from the trailer. Good. That done. If we wanted to actually import the video itself, then we don't actually use import. It's, we use open. And the point is that you take one piece of video, and then that is basically the basis for your session. That is what you want to add all your audio to. That will be the controlling part of it. So you open that. So we could go down here. Let's just uh, let's find one here. Okay. 
So then instead of opening a session, we can then open a video file. There we go. Open that. And now that opens up. Okay. That looks okay. like what it looked like before with one little addition in the top there. Yes. The little addition in the top here is now we have these uh, thumbnails from the video. And if we open, go up to view and open the video, then we get this video pane. And if we play that back. Jeg elsker skuespil, og jeg er også god til det. Det ved jeg, for jeg har været med i rigtig mange skoleteatre, og jeg er blevet brugt for min skuespil. And once again, I'm using my daughter, because I didn't really have any <laughs> video lying around. So, this is what you get. New mascot. So Yeah, the new mascot. Yeah, I should have put a shirt on her, really. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, let's move it to another frame. Yeah, we need. We did this in the the weekend. We needed it for a different thing. Anyhow, <laughs> so this is uh, this you can use if you already have um, uh, something that has been bounced out and you have all the audio, but you just want to do some additional touch ups of your audio. You can do that here. You could, for instance, use that for if you wanted to use the, I don't know, the add some EQ to it or add some compression, or maybe even you wanted to, let's see, you could run the magic levels uh, through it. Yeah, anything that you can think of that you wanted to do as an audio post-production, you could do that right here. Great. So that could be immensely useful. But... If you want to have full control over your post-production sound, it's not enough just to have one track. You want to have all the uh, audio bits and bobs. Now, if we go back to Resolve, you can see here that not only do I have different video tracks, but I also have a number of different audio tracks. So for me to be able to um, edit this in Hindenburg, I'll need to take the entire uh, session and have it imported into uh, Hindenburg, which would be great, and you can, and it's pretty straightforward. I won't go into details of how you actually do it, but it is it's like a, it will take you one minute to do it. It's really simple. I'll put up a video later on on how you actually do it. The end result is that you then go into open here. No, I don't want to save this, and we can find there we go. I'm just going to find the right folder. Excuse me one second. So we find the FCP XML. It's just basically Final Cut Pro XML format. And then we can find this is has been exported from DaVinci. You can export it in this format. And here we have the actual video. Um, But this is all the information about the session and the audio. So all the audio and, and the uh, information about it is in this file, and this is just the the movie itself. And one thing you should bear in mind is they have to have the same name, the exact same name for this to work. But when they do, the trick is this. Just say open. And now we get all the regions and all the audio from the other session which is great. So now we can, I don't know, we can go down and add some colors to this so we can figure out what's what. Let's choose a different color, shall we already? There we go. So and I'm just going to review here real quick for the for everybody watching. Uh, if you want to have the individual tracks, just like you did if you were working mm -hmm. in, um, in uh, Final Cut Pro or DaVinci or anything like that, you export it as an FCP file, Final Cut Pro file, mm -hmm. and then you open that file in Hindenburg and you go to open. Our narrator friends, friends who use uh, Hindenburg Narrator are used to this. That's how it works. You open up the text file instead of importing in different parts of audio. But when you do that, you open up the Final Cut Pro file and there it is displayed all the individual tracks. Yes. And Great. from here, you can basically do, uh, well, any editing that you like. Bear in mind, you... If you start moving things around, they will go out of sync. But it also means, let me just find a version of this where I played around a little with it. Uh, there we go. Here's the video. 
But the great thing is then I can just, uh, as I would do if I was doing a radio show, add uh, sound effects to it, add music to it, add anything I want to it. I can do all my effects uh, in here. So if you're familiar with uh, doing your post-production sound here in Hindenburg anyway, it's a, just a, a really, really easy way of uh, doing it to your video as well. Jeg hedder Pindlo, jeg er 13 år, altså dagligt synger jeg rigtig meget, og jeg går i banen tre gange om ugen, og den så hiphop, og jeg elsker skuespil, og jeg er også god til det, det ved jeg, for jeg har været med i rigtig mange skoleteatre, hvor jeg er blevet brugt for min skuespil. Now this is in Danish, obviously, so you have no idea what she's on about. It sounds beautiful, whatever she says. It sounds beautiful, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I, I actually I just was playing around with it because I you know, thought oh, it would be a good idea to maybe just add some additional harbor sound to it. And we can, well, here we go. We can easily get lost in just having fun with it. Add a few boats. Yeah, we can put them in there. So it gives you a lovely overview of what you're doing. So do you Great. have any questions for that one, John? Yeah, I think the question that folks want to know, because I'm, I'm assuming they're going to want to play around with this and try it out, is when is this uh, new video feature available to everybody? As we speak, if you already have the beta, you just search for an update and there it is. Yes, so we sent the update. I think it, this morning we sent out an update. Uh, yes, we did. We did. So everybody now has uh, the video track. Try this out yourself. Open up some video files. Try opening up an FCP file. Uh, playing around with things. Okay, so it's a whole new feature, whole new kind of uh, way to use the program. Uh, super useful and fun. Um, so uh, we do have qu some questions that people had in general since the, our the launch of 2.0 um and we can't get to everything and and um we really do appreciate all the reporting into support we're keeping track of everything and making updates so if you don't hear us reporting back to you that's because we're doing that we're, we're keeping track of everything and making updates and fixing it that's the whole point of the beta and it's going going very well um so but a couple of questions that that come up um will there be a, a light mode uh to the way that Hindenburg looks pro 2 looks um because it's it's sort of in a dark mode now it is in a dark mode and especially if you come directly from the old version uh, i accidentally did this the other day while i was sitting with the the main developer and we hadn't looked at the old version for some time and we flipped back and went whoa that's very light there are some uh, very good reasons why it is in dark mode. It is uh, so we want as much contrast as as possible. We have tried to play around with the lighter version of it. It just doesn't it doesn't really sit well. So we do want to play around with it more um, to see if we can get it fixed. And in the future, we might be able to do it. Um, but it's not very high on the priority list right now. Well, right, because there are so many things uh, that we want to do and that are on the priority oh, list. Yeah. But that's why you have to <laughs> prioritize. So many of these things that, that you want, we'll get to eventually. Uh, it's just one at a time. But so uh, one thing that the, that has come up a lot, of course, uh, people really love the manuscript uh, yeah. feature here. So there's been a number of questions related to that. One of them is, will you be able to export the manuscript? Will you be able to publish it to hosting sites and such and what does that look like in the future well that's even yeah well, the answer is yes and that's even in the near future it's it's not long off that we will be able to export you the manuscript both as a regular text but also as srt formatted text and also as json formatted text um so it should be possible to well, basically do whatever you want with it but we at the end of the day we want to be able to when you get to publish which is obviously a tool that we already have. Um, if you're publishing to your favorite podcast host, then the manuscript will automatically be part of that metadata. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Uh, and many more updates with all of this. So just stay tuned. Um, so many you know, exciting things are going to be coming out throughout the process of the beta. So just 
just stay tuned. We hear um, we hear all of the the requests and feedback, and and they're great. I'm going to share a couple of questions from the um, from the Q and A area, and then mm -hmm. we're going to go back and break out and go to the um, the tables, everybody. So uh, you can. Um, go to any of these tables and ask uh, questions, any questions that you have, and we could just talk, um, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. So one question that is, uh, gonna be these are going to be pretty easy questions to answer, I think. Here's the first one. How do I set a color for a track? If you could just show us where the, where the um, color window is and how you do that. Yeah, it's, it's actually an interesting question because you don't set color for a track. You set color for the regions. And there, there's a point to that, because uh, typically if, uh, if you're working with uh, a music program, you would set a color for the entire track, which would make sense as you want to um, make sure that all your guitar tracks have the, the same color, what have you. But in our situation, we set colors for the individual regions. So you just select a region, and if you don't have the color picker here, you right-click on the region, and then you find where it says Show Hide Colors. And then, in this case, it will hide it, but if you say Show Colors, all your colors will pop up. And here you can just uh, change the color. If you want to change colors on multiple regions, you uh, just, uh, you can, so there's a number of different ways of selecting you can Click on the first one, shift click on the last one. You can do a marquee selection and then you just change the colors on all of them. The point of this is that when you're telling a story, you don't necessarily have your everyone on separate tracks. You, you might, for reasons of your own, want to mix up things. So suddenly it might look like this. You, you don't want to lose that color information about who's who. So uh, that's basically why it's, it's not allocated the track, but it's allocated the region. And because it stays with the region, when you put regions in, in the clipboard uh, or in the favorites window, they will come out of, of that as the color that they went into it. Actually, that is a, a feature that we're going to be working on, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, is uh, the, the groups will have uh, individual colors as well. I hope we are going to be able to get around to do that soon. So that will basically mean if you've uh, loaded your uh, your clipboard group, so f for instance, that would mean that the sounds, every sound would then have a specific color, and when you drag that out, it would have that color from that group. We're getting there. I promise We're getting we'll get there. Uh, yeah. here is, uh, another question from Steven. Uh, it's a good question related to the video. Um, what are the export formats for the video after you've put your video into Hindenburg? It's a good question. The export formats currently is that we have MP4 and the way that it works is we we basically take all the video frames from the original video. So the one that we used for, for displaying here, we don't touch that in any way. We don't reprocess that or reformat that in any way. We take all the frames from then, from that one, and then we add uh, the new audio to it, and then you get the, the new file. Okay. Um Great. And there are many more questions here uh, and they are very good questions. But what we are going to do is wrap up this part of the presentation. And so I would if you if you have uh, submitted a question, I would um, encourage you to stay. And after we end the session, we're going to break out and be at those tables and there'll be Hindenburg trainers. We have uh, the, the lovely folks from Casa who are here who are running our certification course, which will be um making public and available in the very near future as well. So, so many things going on here, but uh, um, we really appreciate you coming. We hope you continue to enjoy the 2.0 and the rollout of all the features. And we hope to see you at the next one with a sneak peek at the next feature that's coming out. Okay. So we will see you soon and hopefully uh, we will see you at the tables. Bye everybody. <laughs>